Hello programmers and welcome to CircuitPython School. I'm Professor John Gallagher and this is a series for the absolute beginner where we'll learn to code in CircuitPython using the Adafruit Circuit Playground Blue Fruit. Now we're going to take things slow at first, but we're going to take some time to point out some issues that I've seen trip up students in the past, and once we have the basics down we'll be able to go faster. So in this lesson we'll learn how to create programs using Moo, we'll learn about the hashtag or number sign which is a comment character in Python, we'll use code completion in Moo, save and run CircuitPython programs on a microcontroller, print and work with a serial monitor, identify errors in our code, get help with errors using Moo's check button, and save backup copies of our work. So let's learn big! Now in earlier videos in this playlist, we set up our CPB with CircuitPython, we loaded in the libraries that we're going to be using, and we installed the Moo software. Now if you haven't done that yet, go back to the start of the playlist for step-by-step -step instructions. But for everybody who's ready, make sure you've plugged in your CPB, you should see it mounted on your computer with the name CircuitPy. Now if you don't see a volume called CircuitPy, instead you see something named CPlayBoot, that's no good. You can try pressing the reset button in the center of the Circuit Playground again, but if Circuit Pi does not show up, then go back to the prior lesson and repeat the steps to make sure that you've properly installed CircuitPython. You need to have a CircuitPy volume mounted on your computer to continue. Now once you do have CircuitPy, start up Moo! And you'll see that there's a tab in the upper left hand corner labeled Untitled. That means we're creating a new document. Now line 1 has a pound sign and says write your code here. Now the pound sign is a comment character in Python. It means ignore everything that comes after this pound sign or hashtag character. Don't execute it. So pound signs in Python are a great way to document your program. So why don't we highlight the text after the pound sign, delete it, and write our first comment. So we'll write, this is my first CircuitPython program. And this is my first comment line. Now the next thing we're going to do underneath that is we're actually going to program. We're going to type a print statement. This is all in lowercase, but we'll start by typing slowly. P and then R, and then notice what happens. This here is code completion, this little box that pops up. Moo is showing you keywords that it knows start with the letter PR, print and program. What Moo is doing is it's offering to complete typing for me. Now there's no reason why I can't type in PRINT, and I usually do, but I can also use the down and up key to highlight the different words that Moo was suggesting. I'm going to highlight the word print, then press return, and Moo types in the rest of that phrase for me. Now sometimes this can help you enter code more quickly, it can prevent spelling mistakes, and it can even serve as a kind of help because it'll let you know keywords that begin with letters you type in case you forget the full name of the word that you want to use. Now this word print here is a function. Typically, when we have a function to tell Python to do something, in this case we want it to print something out, we start things off with an open parenthesis and we end it with a closed parenthesis. Now as soon as I type an open parenthesis, I get a yellow box down here that reminds me of what this particular statement does. It's a little bit of pop-up documentation. Sometimes this will be useful to refer to, but right now we're just going to ignore it. Now inside the parentheses, we'll put any stuff the function needs to do its job. And in this case, we'll put in the text that we want to print. Now text to print goes in between a set of double quotes. So I'm going to type in, double quote, I just wrote my first CircuitPython program, exclamation point, close double quote. Then let's finish that off with a close parenthesis. And you'll notice that Moo has added color to my code. Comments are in gray keywords print in blue, and the text that I've typed in, including the double quotes, is in red. By the way, programmers refer to text like this as a string, as in a string of characters. And it's important that I have the characters in my string inside of double quotes. Now this color-coded code is really useful, because over time you'll get used to how code should be highlighted, and if the color seems off, that's an indication that your program might have an error. In fact, another thing to notice is that if I forgot the closing double quote here, and you can follow along by typing a backspace to delete the closing double quote, Moo will highlight a portion of this line in red. That's Moo's way of saying, hey, there's a problem here. So if you see red highlighting on a line, there's probably an error on that line. But if I type the closing double quote character, the red error highlighting goes away. Now there's another way we can get help finding errors in our code. And I'll backspace twice to remove the closing paren and the closing double quote. And I'll click the check button with this thumbs up icon. And Moo will make its best guess as to what the problem is. And if you look closely, you'll see that the check icon briefly turns red and gives a thumbs down. Thumbs down means the check failed. There's an error in our code. Now after clicking check, we see that Moo has added some text below the line where it found the error and it says syntax error. A syntax error is a programming error that's sort of the equivalent of a spelling or grammar error. Python can't understand this line. Check for missing characters. And sure enough, we don't have a closing double quote here. Now if I add a closing quote and my closing parenthesis, then click check again, the error goes away. If you click a second time and look closely, the check button changes briefly and gives you a green thumbs up. I don't see any error, so this is looking good. By the way, the same applies if we forget the closing parenthesis. We get the same error about missing characters because we need that closing paren. Add that, click check again, and we're good. 
By the way, if you prefer dark mode and a different code coloring scheme, you can click on the theme button up here and that'll cycle you through any of the styles that Moo offers. But I'll cycle back and keep mine as this default. And now notice up here in the upper left hand corner, this tab has a red dot next to it. Now that red dot means that we have unsaved changes, which is correct since we haven't saved anything. So I'm gonna click on the save button. Since I haven't saved anything yet, I see the save as dialog box here. Now, if you have your CPB plugged in, you should see it mounted on your computer, just like a flash drive, and it should be named CircuitPy. If for some reason it doesn't appear, you can try unplugging and plugging the device back in. You can also click the reset button in the middle of the CPB once, not twice. If the lights in the CPB turn green, you click it too many times, so just click it once again. But hopefully you don't need to do any of that because the CircuitPy volume is showing. And whenever we save a program to our CircuitPy volume, we're going to name that program code.py, all lowercase. Now that might seem weird. You never name all of your word processing files with the same name. But microcontrollers like the CPB only execute one program at a time. And when it finds a file named code.py when it restarts, that's the program it's going to run. Now, technically, you could save the file with some other names, main.py, code.txt, or main.txt. CircuitPython can execute files with those names too. But if you only use code.py, you'll never be confused because you've got multiple files on there with names that could execute and you're not sure which one's executing. And code.py is also the name that you'll find used in most of the tutorial examples you'll see online. Now pay attention to this because I've seen students make this mistake. If you save your file with a name that's not code.py, say you call it print.py, example number one, or program.py, then that code will not execute. CircuitPython is gonna look for the file named code.py, and if the file doesn't have that name, it's not gonna run it. So with the file named code.py, all lowercase, click save. Now as part of the installation, a code.py file might have already been created on your CPB, but if it is, just click on replace. And again, we don't see anything but I want you to click on this serial button in the toolbar. And what this does is it opens up a window on the bottom of our screen, and this is called the serial console. Sometimes you'll hear it called the serial monitor. Now the serial console will give you information on whether your program has any errors, and it also acts as a window where your board can send data back to Moo for you to look at. Now one way the board can send data back to the serial console is by using the print command. So now with the serial monitor showing, we're gonna click on the save button again. This restarts the CPB executing code.py right from the beginning. You can tell the program ran because the text in the serial console will be filled with additional output. And whoa, it says, I just wrote my first CircuitPython program. And you did do a happy dance. Now let's modify some of that code. We'll highlight the word first here. We'll delete that. We'll type in the word second, and now notice in the upper left-hand corner, code.py has a red dot on it again. And that means that we have unsaved changes, and indeed there are, because we just changed a word in our code. So let's click on the save button. This saves to the CPB. It runs the code right from the beginning, and whoa! We see the line down here in the serial monitor says, I just wrote my second CircuitPython program. Nice work! Now, every time you click on save, you save code.py onto your microcontroller, and that code starts executing again right from the start. So this is an important concept when working with microcontrollers. Make sure you understand this. The Python program that executed this print command and printed, I just wrote my second CircuitPython program, was not run on your computer. It was run on the Circuit Playground Bluefruit on the microcontroller. The serial monitor just provides a window into the results of the running program that come from the microcontroller. Now, every time you click the save button, we'll rerun the program right from the start. Cool. Now, let's say you wanna make a backup of your code and you wanna save it onto your computer. Well, what you can do is just double click on the tab up here where it says code.py. Now that opens up the standard save as dialog box. And you can save this wherever you want to on your computer and you can give it a new name. So I'm gonna head over to my desktop I'm gonna create a new folder called CircuitPython School where I'm gonna save all of my files in this series and I'll give this file a name. I'll call it simple-print, then click the Save button. And now I've got a version of this program saved onto my computer desktop. Now another big warning for new programmers. If you make changes here and save them, you will not see the results on your Circuit Playground board. That's because this file is on your desktop. To run, a file needs to be saved as code.py on your CircuitPy volume. 
Now they're still code.py on my CPB, but I've got this version here on my computer. So if you're doing this video as part of a course and your instructor asks you to submit your code, what you'll want to do is double click on the tab, save the program to your computer using a name that you can recognize, maybe save it with a name your instructor told you to use, and then turn that file in. Now here's something else that's important to understand. This file that I just saved, simple-print, is on my computer, it's on my Mac, it's not on my CPB. So if I want to go back and execute the code on my microcontroller, then I've got to resave the code as code.py on my CPB. So I'll double click on the file name in the tab, simple-print. I'm going to find my circuit pi volume, click to select that so that I know that I'm saving my file there. And then I'm going to either type in code.py or if you're using a Mac, you can do what I'm doing here. Just click on the name that's grayed out and that file name automatically is entered as the file name. Then click save and you're asked if you want to replace the file on disk because there's already a code.py there. I'm going to select replace and it executes our code again. We see a little jump in the bottom of the serial monitor and it says, I just wrote my second circuit Python program. Well, that's good work printing, but one of the fun things to do in physical computing is actually make things light up. We'll do that in our next lesson, but in this lesson, even though we didn't write much code, there was a lot of big learning. We used Moo to write our first CircuitPython program. We learned about the hashtag or number sign, which is how we write comments in Python. Very useful for documenting our code. We learned about code completion in Moo. We learned text between double quotes is referred to as a string. We learned to save and execute a CircuitPython program on a microcontroller. We learned about the print command. We used the serial monitor. We learned to identify errors. We now know what a syntax error is, and we learned how to use Moo's check button to get additional help identifying and interpreting errors in our code, and we learned how to save backup copies of our programs to our computer. So you're really building some CircuitPython skills there, programmer. There's lots more to come. Awesome things will be made.